All right. If you've come across some of these um, future of work predictions, um, you know, just how people look at just the trends and all of that happening with work, and then you have all these things they call future of work, and just a lot of those predictions, you would have probably come across the fact that some jobs are going to become extinct or are predicted to become extinct. And um, maybe you've looked at yourself in that line and you already know you're in trouble, so you are already like trying to do some side hustle, you're doing an extra course somewhere, because you know your job is about to become extinct. Um, but maybe today, not so much about being extinct, but I was thinking about what they call ridiculous jobs. There are some jobs that they call ridiculous jobs. Um, and I was looking through a listing of ridiculous jobs in the world. I'm sorry if you do any of these, I don't mean to embarrass you, but um, your job is just considered ridiculous. And so the first one I'm going to mention, I'll just tell you about four or five of them. The first one I'm going to mention is, um, wait for it, lifeguard at Olympic swimming. Like this is swimming at the Olympics. We're about to start swimming. But wait, wait, wait. Is the lifeguard ready to save people that want to drown? You know, like... Stuff like that. Olympic swimming lifeguard, like Michael Phelps. We, ho we hope you won't drown. You know. Okay, second one. Restroom attendant at, you know, like airports. Have, have you ever been as annoyed as I am by that guy that is just cutting tissue and giving you the appropriate quantity? So, like, I'm pressing the soap, you know, stuff like that. And then there are those ones that the doors don't touch the ground. And one day I was in one and he was pushing things on, like, just very annoying. Um, let me give you a third one. Lift operator. Like, you know those elevator operators? Like, we want to go to the third floor, but we cannot press number three. So he's going to press it for you to go up. UCH. Okay. <laughs> um, listen, listen. Professional paint drying watcher. So basically your job is like professionally watch paint dry. Right? There's a guy, I was reading the story of a guy, he's called Keith Jackson, he's in the UK, and that's his job. He has done it for decades. He has worked for a paint manufacturer for, who, for which he's responsible for determining how quickly does the paint dry. So he swipes it onto cardboard and he monitors how quickly it dries using a stopwatch. Like, you know. And then he was then doing an interview with the Daily Mail. Listen to what he says. Watching paint dry sounds quite easy but it can be stressful at times. <clears throat> I'm just saying this for people that think like unemployment is an issue, like you have options, right? Let me give you one that many of you will know you qualify for. Listen to this. Professional sleeper. Like, what do you do? Sleep. <laughs> Sleep. Sleep. And so what these guys do is that they work for like ma mattress manufacturers, and so they help to test the mattresses, you know, um, you know, whether like you slept four hours, how did you feel? It's not as good as the last one, you know, like the test mattresses and stuff like that. And the point for me with all of these things and the word that kind of cuts across is that I just feel like it's not necessary. It feels like the concept of a tautology where you have two concepts, two words, and you're trying to say, I, I feel one of them is not necessary. Um, and I kind of want to speak on this tautology thing today. What does the tautology mean? It's the saying of the same thing twice over in different words. So you're basically saying the same thing, but you're saying it in different words, um, and you know, just in a faulty way. So before I get into what I want to share, let's do a quick Nigerian tautology test. Let's just check out people in second service and see which one you are guilty of. You've ever said this before, just wave and don't be ashamed, like you really don't care. Pin number. Let's just see them. You've ever said your PIN number? Somebody like, what is wrong with that? That is the exact point of what we're saying. You've never said it before, PIN number. Uh, ah, second service people. Ah, All right, there we go. ATM machine. ATM machine. Like I'm going to the ATM machine. The ATM machine could dispense. Let me see you. All right, third one. HIV virus. HIV virus. Uh, not many people. Nobody on this side. Like, ah, hey, hey, hey. One day I saw two guys fighting. One was like a bike man. Won't talk about tribes, but you know where this is going. And then he was like, you the craze for head? 
I'm like, where else? Like, <laughs> with a graceful leg, <laughs> you know, like, okay. But this one, you've probably, if you've, if you've driven around town and you have that zealous helper that is like, ah, you want to come out of a tight place. Ah, let me help you. Ah, wait, wait, wait. You know, it's not Sycamore security. It's not Sycamore security. <laughs> but, 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 like, you've probably heard this before. If it was just reverse back, it would be better. But it's like, reverse back, pada, say ye. Reverse back, pada, say ye. Like, four times over, like, that's tough. Okay, let me read the scripture. 1 Kings chapter 3, let's, let's, let's get into where we're going. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 16. Um, I'll read into verse 27. This is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, and I'm going to preach out of this today. Now two women who were harlots came to the king and stood before him. And one woman said, oh my Lord, this woman and I dwell in the same house, and I gave birth while she was in the house. Then it happened the third day after I had given birth that this woman also gave birth. And we were together. No one was with us in the house except the two of us in the house. And this woman's son died in the night because she lay on him. So she arose in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while your maidservant slept and laid him in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to nurse my son, there he was dead. But when I had examined him in the morning, indeed, he was not my son whom I had born. Then the other woman said, no, but the living one is my son and the dead one is your son. And the first woman said, no, but the dead one is your son and the living one is my son. Thus they spoke contentiously before the king. And the king said, the one says, this is my son who lives and your son is the dead. And the other one says, no, but your son is the dead one and my son is the living one. Then the king said, it's okay, bring me a sword. So they brought a sword before the king and the king said, divide the living child in two and give half to one and half to the other. Then the woman whose son was living spoke to the king, for she yearned with compassion for her son, and she said, Oh my Lord, give her the living child, and by no means kill him. But the other said, No, 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 let him be neither mine nor yours, but divide. Don't give me, just divide. So the king answered and said, Give the first woman the living child, and by no means kill him. She is his mother. Today I'll speak out of this story for just a few moments, and I'll call my message today, Dead Half is Toto the king and there's the voice of truth but the voice of falsehood and the Bible says they both lived in the same house they both lived in the same house in the same house where truth has come in falsehood has also come in and there's just that contention going on and as we look around our generation I really think and as the world around us I think like I see this same concept that truth sometimes is seeming to like it's doing all that it knows to do but falsehood is just also present that there is just that contention of falsehood even in the face of truth whether you're thinking about it in space of politics and you know just the questions because you're hearing all these brilliant promises and all of that and you just don't even know who to trust again because in the place where truth is speaking the lies are also speaking whether it's in the space of morality it feels like there's truth but there is falsehood um to use a word someone used yesterday there is hypocrisy in the space of religion or sometimes even just in work systems like you're just trying to do a job and you're just trying to be right trying to be true but there is just this presence of falsehood and as i was thinking about all of this contention i was just thinking man it's been coming a long time the contention between falsehood and truth that somebody's innocently trying to say this is the truth this is my child but it just doesn't go down like that there is just that voice that shows up and is contending it and honestly, it's, it even gets more painful when, when the contention is so, is so rife that you don't even know. It's like you've been speaking the truth, but now there's so much contention that you can't even just pick out. The lie is now looking so much like the truth. The truth is now even starting to seem like a lie. Have you been there before that you are standing on your truth to the point that the lie was so audacious and you even started questioning your truth? Don't we live in that kind of a world sometimes that you're like, yes, I've been saying these things, but the way the... Uh, I'm not even sure that maybe there's a way I've not yet read my Bible. It gets really painful and confusing. But what I want to do today is that I want to put the light on the lie, just in this, maybe more than just the liar, just the concept of the lie that is being sold here. And I think it's really going to help us that we're going to see that the lie today, this woman who is lying is saying that, you know what, I don't even need to hold the baby. 
please listen to what she said. The, 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 the mother is saying, give her the baby. And she said, no, I don't want to hold the baby. She's saying, let us just have half each. You go with half, and let me also go with half. You take half. Let's reach a middle ground. Let us just take half each. Let's compromise. Let us just see you compromise your absolutes. Right? All I want is that you are not living in the full of what you should. Just compromise and stand in half. But you see, the mother, the real mother in the story in which we read, she understood something that I think we must understand today. And this is what I really want to hit on today. She's simply showing us that if I accept, if I ever accept to go home with half of my child, I'm going home with the dead half. There is no world in which I will go home with a living half. If I say, let's go half, in that moment of accepting half, in that moment of accepting less than the full, it's going to be a dead half. In short, what she's showing us is that a dead half is tautology. You don't need to say both. Just say it's dead or say it's half. It's a tautology. If I ever accept the concept of half, it's enough to say it's half, and that already means it is dead. And you see, there's a voice of the enemy that many of us here today, if we'll be honest, are dealing with a voice that is telling you to just settle for half commitment, you know, just live your life in the half, just settle for half passion, half of your joy. You really don't have to pursue the dream to the full. Just stop at that half, you know, point, back out midway. You know, you've come a distance, just give up on that course. You, you're kind of holding your faith in the extremes, just kind of settle for half. But what I came to say today is that half is a dead. There is not such a thing as a living half. Half, when it comes to a conversation of God's plan for your life, half and when it comes to the story of God's calling over your life, half when it comes to the story of what God is doing in your life, if you take half, you are accepting a dead half. God said, Jesus is speaking in John 10 and 10 and he says the thief comes to steal, to kill and to destroy but I've come that you would have life. See the thief is trying to bring us into this conversation of death but Jesus says I've come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. His plan for you is not half. His plan for you is not barely getting by. His plan for you is full and what he calls abundant, more abundant. That's how he speaks about life. If you ever settle in that conversation to say you know what let's just do it half, half, half is deadness. Half is a dead half. That's what I'm trying to say to you today. Don't live half. God's call for you is not to live half. God's call for us is not that on Monday morning, you know, you're showing up at work, just kind of half of yourself. You know, I'm not fully in this thing. Oh, it's just the job I'm working. It's just where I am right now. It's just the season of my life. I'm just kind of half around everything. Half of my emotions are not here in my marriage. Half of my mind is not here. Half of me is not. I'm just kind of half. half. Listen, half is a dead half. Half is never a living half. Half is a dead half. I'm just going with half of my life. Half in the conversations that I'm supposed to be half everything just seems like it's been abbreviated it's been cut short even your text messages you can't write in full half everything hbt half half the woman realized that de a dead half is tautology look at somebody this morning and say dead half is tautology dead half is it's tautology don't take the half the woman realized and said see i would rather that my baby is alive elsewhere than accept the concept of half of my baby. I would rather know that this baby is living somewhere than accept, like, like let the child not even be with me and that's another conversation about how deep we're called to deep, but that's another conversation. But I would rather accept that that child is alive somewhere than settle into a half. I mean, let me explain myself better today. Let me try and show you what i'm trying to say because this is not first of all about the size when i say half i'm not talking about size first i'm talking about the concept of half because there is a baby all right and it's okay to be a living baby you can have a living baby all right you can have a seed that is so small and it is a living seed in fact first peter tells us that when we're born again we're born again by the seed the incorruptible seed of the word of god god is pleased to do things by a seed and the seed looks so small i'm not saying something must be big no the bible says we should not despise the days of small beginnings it's okay to have something small but what i'm saying is there's a difference between half and a baby 
That even a 40 year old man that is built up and big and huge and weighs 150 kilograms, the moment it becomes half, is a dead half. That's what I'm saying. And so it's not about there is such a thing as it can be a baby, but does he have the two eyes? Does he have the full nose? Does he have the full mouth? And, and is it complete? All right. So even if it's small, that's not the most important thing. The idea here is that let it not be half. The moment it is half, even if it's one very bigger, it is already a dead half. That's what I'm saying. And when you think about this, I think more than ever before, we need to remind ourselves because there's a liar that is whispering in our ears and telling us that it's okay to just go half. Let me help you this morning. See, it's okay to be a baby Christian. It's okay to be a baby Christian, but not to be a half Christian. Maybe you started walking with the Lord and you are new to faith, new to a lot of that. You're figuring out your baby steps and all of that around God. It's okay to be a baby Christian, but there is, that's so different from a supposed half Christian. There is, there is a difference between a, a somebody starting out with his small steps and somebody who has built a concept of half, because half is a dead half. There's no such thing as a half. To be a Christian means to be totally surrendered to Jesus. So you might be a baby Christian learning what that surrender means, learning how to walk that and fighting your way in those battles of surrender. But that is different from sitting down and justifying a Christianity of your own making that gives God half of your life. That gives God half of your week. I kind of know the days when I'm like, for God, I kind of know when I'm here, I'm God, like God is just half. That, 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 that we build a God who has a say in our prosperity, but not in our sexuality. We build a God who has a say in how I find my peace of mind, but not a say in the kind of decisions that I make in my life. There's no such thing as a half Christian. There's no such thing. A half Christian is a dead Christian. If it's half, it's dead. It's no, see, Dead half is tautology. If it's half, it's dead. And let me say to you today, forget all that nonsense that your unbeliever friends tell you about like your type of Christianity. You know how your unbeliever friends tell you that, ah, you know, I like, you're the kind of Christian that I like. That, you know, I know some Christians that will now be carrying the thing to extreme that, but you, you are just really cool. That I just, you're just the kind of Christian that uh, I like. You're a cool Christian. You don't carry it on your head like some people and, you know, all of that. Stop. It is not an unbeliever that would teach me how to be a Christian. Yes, All right? It is not an American that would teach me Yoruba culture. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Dear unbeliever, if you know how to be a Christian, be one. But don't come and be doing counseling of how I should do my Christianity. Are you hearing me this morning? I'm not claiming to be a perfect Christian, but I refuse to be a half Christian. I just carry everything about my heart to Jesus. I stroll into church like anything, like it doesn't matter, half passion, half surrender, half joy, half lifting of my hand, halfway into worship, not really there, but not really out, you know, kind of around, kind of not there. Half, I refuse to be a half Christian. I refuse to live a half life. I refuse at my work to just be like a half person, half diligence, half is deadness. That's what I want you to know. Don't believe the lie. Please don't believe the lie. This is what the enemy rings in our ears that, come on, you can go home with half. It gives you a feel of it at least before I was saying it's mine. But now let's even just share. And so you kind of just take that compromise language. But I'm just saying to us, it's just a trick of the enemy. So you justify it by like, at least I shall go to church. But I'm just saying that half, the side you pick, whether you do it, the side you pick is a dead half. It's a dead half. Let me ask you, how do you... How do you typically respond when you are wrongly accused? Um, how many of you, like, you just give it to them? You fight back, like, you give me, I give you, fire for fire. Like, I don't, how many of you are like that? Like, I just, okay. How many of you just start crying? Like, <laughs> But I want, let me ask you, have you been in those situations before where it honestly just feels like, what's the contention, the easiest thing to do? Just to allow yourself to be cheated. We will, on judgment day, the truth will come out. Like, all these siblings that, you know, how many of you have those kind of siblings that on judgment day? How many of you are looking for your siblings on judgment day to point out one or two things that you are accused of, right? You know. But I kind of, I feel for the woman in our story today, the real mother of the child, because maybe it felt that way for her. Maybe 
every voice of the past in that moment would even just start to trouble her. You know when your contention started in the house and they were kind of saying it's mine, it's yours, and it's my child now. Like, <laughs> I get that you killed your own. I know my child now. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, then the contention starts, then we now start going to King, then King, now now we're going public, now it, it starts tweeting, it's going on newspapers, like, uh, uh, very thick. Feel that way sometimes. Like, just give in. Just give in. Then the voice of the past starts to trouble you, it now starts reminding you that, yeah, yeah even a lot. you don't deserve any goodness in life. You, you are also claiming child. People are like, you know, do you deserve, think of the number of children you have killed. Is, is your, they are coming back for you. Do you even think the king likes you? What, like you're even just disturbing the king. I think at some point, it, I can relate to it if I was in that woman's shoes. I can relate to just giving in to, uh, yeah, it's okay. You know those moments when your wife has, you just say, it's okay, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. But today, I really pray that God, I'm saying people's wives, why are you t- talking about? You people, don't spoil my marriage, please. They'll now think I was talking about what happened to me and my wife this week. Anyway, but <laughs> please don't spoil my wife. So, but today, I really pray that God will make this real to you. Victor, please come. I think I just need you. Because the way people are looking at me in this service, I'm even now wondering, is it word of God I'm preaching? All right. How many of you are planning to go to watch the World Cup? World Cup is starting today. How many of you are planning to go to watch? Because they're not allowing them to drink alcohol everywhere. You don't want to go. <laughs> okay. You can go and support Ghana. Nkrumah. <laughs> All right. Today, I pray God will make this concept real to you. That what we're dealing with, just in the face of the contention and the nagging of the opponent, and sometimes you're just like, okay, I give in, like, whatever, like, just whatever you do. But what I'm praying today is that God will help you to see that this is not a question of, is it cool or is it not cool? This is not cool versus cool. This is not, like, personality type. Like, I'm not the type of person that likes to contest, like, see, just, I just want peace of mind. Just anything you say, you know. This is not personality type. This is, this is life versus death. This is life versus death. That's what we need to be seeing. That the argument of truth and of the lie is a life versus death question. The lie is saying, let's divide it into two. And if we are allowing that, then we are dying. We are losing what we have. That the devil loves the sound of half. The devil loves the sound of of a Christian that is deceiving herself or himself about a half. That you can just have a similitude, a form of godliness, but just don't have the power. You know, just be like a cloud, but let there be no water. The devil loves the sound of half. The devil loves when we start well, but we just start to back out. But let me tell you what today. Listen, friends, half will not fulfill the purpose of God for my life. Half will not. Half obedience will not unveil the plan of God for me. It will not unveil the weight. Half passion will not thrive in what God is calling me to do. Half, half, half love in my home. Half like probation kind of love in, in my marriage will not build the kind of home God sees for me. Half dedication will not, half cannot raise my children to be on fire for God. Half commitment, half, half diligence with my work cannot allow me to thrive and excel in, in the plan of God for me to stand out and, and be above. Half will not do the plan of God for my life. Have diligence, have joy is not enough for me to live with. This crazy world, half. See, see, dead half is a tautology. Once it's half, it's dead already. Today I was thinking about this, it's like Moses in the middle of an encounter with God. You know, God comes to Moses and the bush is burning. And Moses is like, wow, Moses is encountering God. The bush is burning. And, and he, he hears the voice of God and he comes close. And God is like, take off your sandals. Like, Moses is like, I've heard God. Like, wow, I'm even in an encounter with God. And he takes off his sandals and he's just loving the moment. The bush is burning and it's not consumed. And God says, let out your rod. And he puts his rod out. And then the Bible says it becomes a serpent. Moses is like, oh, more times 1,000. And Moses runs away. Like, I saw a serpent. Guess what, guys? And Moses runs to start telling all his friends that, that God took my...
my sandals, God took my rod and made it a serpent. God made a mess of my life. I was doing my work. That's the rod I was using to take care of the sheep and all of that. God stole it from me. And Moses starts to tell this story of a miserable God. And you know, sometimes the problem with half truth is that it even has a it has sprinkles and a frame of of the real. So you're yeah, like Moses, you heard God. He's like, I heard God. Did you not hear God? He heard God. That I encountered God. Did he not? Yes, he did. But there is something about seeing a God process through. Because what Moses would eventually tell you is that, see, in all those moments where you feel like God is a taker, God took my sandals, God took my rod, God took my, God took my job. In all those moments where you feel like God is a taker, that is not the full story. The full story, God is not a taker. God is a giver. God is a maker. God is doing something in your life, Moses. If you would stay through, but half will never see the full weight of God's purpose. And I'm thinking about how many people are in the middle of a process with God and are running away. Like we got to those points where we had questions and all of that. And we didn't understand what God was doing. Like, why did my rod become a serpent? And you ran away. And then you ran away to start to tell a half story about a God who is wicked. And then you now have this social media following about a God. And then, and then you now hear them say things like, see, we have done this Christianity thing before. I'm like, no, it's not about what we have done. I'm talking about what we do now. Because it's not a history thing, it's a story we are seeing through. Are you hearing me? And you're pointing to moments and saying, see, in 1985, let me tell you, God spoke. And you're, and you're trying to add it up. And I'm saying, if Moses runs away in the middle of a God process, he will just never see the full weight of a loving God. He's not a taker, he's a giver. You have to stay in that story. Stay in it. Sometimes it's easy to pick out an outright lie. Like, ah, no, no, no. but the half truth can be very confusing. Half truth is not the gospel. It has a form of godliness, but it denies the power. We would only see the full weight when we stay through. Half is not the weight of what God is doing. Let me say this to people today that are in the middle of a process that you don't even understand. You are in the middle of, 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 of a season where you have questions or, or God in himself in, as a concept is not looking like he's acting up. Like, God, what are you up to? Why did you take, like, I'm just in those moments. I feel like it's even the same woman in our story who in that moment was having a nagging liar who is saying it's my child and we're in all those contentions and then you run to the king who is like a type of our God. Now you run to the king and you're like, I've heard he's good. I've heard he's wise. I've heard he's... And then you get to the king and you've explained your story. And she has explained her side. And you're saying, you're on, and you just expect like the king should understand and the king should know the truth. And then the next thing the king says, the king says, bring me a sword. Stop. Bring me a sword. Oh, maybe he wants to kill her. And then he says, no, divide the child. Stop again. Divide the child like king you are literally giving an instruction for my child and you see that guy bringing out a sword ready to divide the child what do you do in those moments where you have questions and God just looks like he's not even getting himself what do you do when God looks like he's not adding up he's not making sense when I gave my life to Christ I knew my 10 year plan and here I am in the middle and it just doesn't even seem to be adding up and I said yes to Jesus and I left everything and I knew what, where I wanted to be. I knew my dreams at 21. I knew all the plans and all of that. And what do you do when you are... All I would say, Moses would tell you, the woman would tell you, you need to see the story through. Because just when you think that ah, this king is wicked, he's bringing out a sword to kill my child. Maybe not. Listen, at the end of the day, what you're going to find is that the king was always for the truth, not against the truth. He was always for you, not against you. Listen, that sword was never really going to cut the child. The mission of that sword was to silence the liar. All right? The sword went back eventually. It didn't touch anybody, but the liar was silenced forever. It's the wisdom of the king. And we need to be in those middle moments where we don't even understand what God is doing, but we trust him. That's what it means. Half will never tell a story of what God is doing in your life. Friends, I want to encourage somebody just in their middle season, stay through. Even when God sends for a sword, he's a good God. He loves you. Even when you're facing opposition, you don't know what to do with God loves you. He knows you. He sees you. Amen. He's aware. He's working his purpose. He's not a taker. He's not a killer. He came that you would have life and have it more abundantly. He's a giver. He's making you into his image. You have been transformed from glory to glory. God is at work in you by the power of the Holy Spirit if you would give yourself to it who our God is. He's good. Amen. God is good. God is not good when you have a testimony to share. God is always good. It is his character to be good and he does good. Amen. When I say half, 
it's always going to be a dead half i'm thinking about abraham abraham going up the mountain with his son and he says i'm going to sacrifice my son to the lord because that's what god told me to do god gave me an instruction and i'm obeying god and abraham is going up and then suddenly somewhere in the middle of climbing that mountain isaac starts to ask questions isaac is saying my father my father and abraham says here i am my son and he says i see the wood and i see the fire but where is the lamb for the sacrifice what do you do when you're on a god journey of obedience but you have questions that you don't have answers to. You know, Abraham would probably have been arguing it in his mind and pushing it, but now Isaac is nagging you with the questions. What are you supposed to tell Isaac? What do you do? <sighs> I think what the devil would love more than anything is that Abraham will get to the point where he will give more weight to the questions than to the call. I'll say that again. What the devil will love more than anything is that in the middle of your process, you will give more weight to the questions than to the call. But listen, it was God who sent you on an assignment and it was God who knew what he was doing, Abraham. Eventually, Abraham will tell you that, see, what I eventually realized is that when I am climbing my journey in obedience to God, there is a blind side of the mountain that God is orchestrating. There's a blind side. There's a blind side. Eventually, you would know that there is a blind side. See, it would have been real easy if Abraham could see it all. And as he took one step, he can see the fulfillment. And as I take one step in obedience I can see coming but, but you don't always have that privilege sometimes you are traveling but there is a side of the mountain that is blind to you but it's not blind to God that God who is orchestrating a journey of your obedience listen when your obedience is complete then the provision will be unveiled when your obedience is complete see half obedience cannot unveil it all half obedience cannot unveil the provision and the plan of God but when your obedience is complete Abraham will tell you then in that moment he said lift up your eyes and there was a ram that was caught in the thicket because i believe that as abraham was traveling his own journey of obedience and i know he was facing questions and he was facing needs and he was facing situations but see god already had the provision that was traveling up the other side and as abraham was taking one step god was orchestrating the ram on the other side and, and as abraham was obeying more and getting tired and abraham please don't go back what would you tell abraham if you are watching please don't go back abraham please stay through please go forward abraham please keep going it's in the future god is going to do more it's not in the questions you're facing now abraham half his deadness half is going to lose this but abraham please stay through and the ram, its horns were getting locked in the bush. The ram was trying to escape. It was locking it more. It was trying to pull it out. But it was locking it more. So that when Abraham's obedience was complete. So that when his obedience was complete, the provision would be unveiled. On one hand, Moses will tell you. Moses will tell you that God is not a taker. God is a giver. He's a maker. Abraham will tell you that, see, in your journey of obedience, God has a blind side of the mountain. Please don't underestimate it. Please don't buy the devil's lie of half obedience, you know, like selective obedience. I kind of do the ones I want to do, but leave the ones I can't. Like, please don't buy the devil's lie of selective obedience. I'll, I'll share, I'll share, go to church, but I'll not really give myself to the other stores. Please don't buy the devil's lie of selective obedience. Be, be all in. Abraham will tell you, give yourself, pour yourself. It is in the full picture that the weight of God God's intention will be unveiled. Saul will tell you that I've, I've, I've kind of obeyed. You hear what Saul's voice is saying. I've kind of obeyed, but I have um, selected the ones I want to obey. Um, but see, half is dead. It's, it's a dead half. He's rejected as king. It's a dead half. Half is, is dead. Let's be sold out in obedience like Abraham. See, you may not have all the answers, but I pray that you won't hold back on a God direction. You may not have all the answers see you might be dealing with a why you might be dealing with a what you may be dealing with a when you may be dealing with a how with a where but 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 let me tell you what god and you may be, you may be dealing with questions that you don't even have answers to but here is what i want you to know that it is in traveling the god direction that the provision is unveiled it is in pressing forward the the, the direction is never sitting down here to understand it no it's never sitting here if you're reading a book you read one chapter another chapter and the third chapter and it doesn't make sense why did this person slap that person and why did this happen blah 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 and then you close the book no 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 that's not how to understand the only way to understand is to move to the next chapter it's to press on to move to the next sometimes you get to chapter 15 before you can really understand what happened in chapter 2 but press on i pray that the questions i face that's my prayer will never stop me from pressing on in a god direction I do have questions 
There are some who will find answers on earth. There are some. Let's get to heaven. They will not be asking God. All right? But don't let your questions stop you from a God journey. Amen, anybody? Amen. Yeah. It's okay to have a why, a what, a when, a who, but it's not okay to hold back in a God direction. See, the devil loves the sound of half. The devil loves when you are now just kind of becoming that half person because the devil knows that half is the lie. That's the compromise. Half is, is dead. It's, it's tautology. And um, what of when you are maybe like Joseph this morning and um, look at everything. You've done everything right. Started out well. You had the right dreams in your heart. You've worked, you know, you are the good child. You would always report your brothers to your parents, you know. You, you do all of that. Your dad just liked you, you know, to the point that your brother sold you, you know. Telling them in first service, I think maybe my story being different from Joseph, as, a, as that last one is that there was nobody to sell to. But, you know, but you, you know, like, uh, yeah, stuff could have happened in their anger. So, but what you do when you've done all of that, you've done all you know to be right. And then here you are now in the middle of an Egyptian prison. Here you are in just this story that is not adding up, serving in Potiphar's house. And then sometimes just in your bitterness, right there where you are bitter and hurting, Potiphar's wife comes and she's just making passes at you. You didn't even go and look for her. She's coming and making passes at you. And then you get to that point where you now start to say, yes, that maybe this is even just my opportunity to just have a sense of justice for my life. Like, you know, when you start ranting and you're, you're saying things like, where was God when my brother sold me? Where was God when this happened? Where was God? And this just starts to feel like your chance to take some kind of justice for your like where was God when the organization was cheating me and then now it has played into my hands like this is not even about whether it's right or wrong this is just about me giving teaching them paying them in their own coin do you understand what I'm trying to say just that justification of a sense of bitterness but you know when it comes to a question of injustice what I would honestly say to you today is please don't win battles but lose the war please don't don't fight small don't win this but lose who you are. Don't lose a journey that you are traveling, Joseph. Because eventually, Joseph will tell you that there is no justification to live bitter. Eventually, that's what we're going to find. See, let me help you, friends. Because of Jesus, because of who Jesus is, you do not ever have a justification to be offended, to be bitter, to be unforgiving because of who Jesus I'll tell you why. Because you owed him a greater debt and he forgave you. So you have no right to look at the person who did less to you. I know they did you wrong. I know you might have been abused and hurt and pain and all of that should not have happened but I'm saying what you did to him was greater evil and he forgave you and so because of Jesus we have no right friends to live hurt and offended and bitter but we lay down to him and Joseph will tell you man let go let go and travel the journey because half is never going to fulfill it's never going to fulfill the weight of God's intention for you I think of half this morning as I walk through scripture and I think half in Jesus story that half is Jesus getting to the point of the cross and and refusing the cross? Half is Jesus getting like like he had done everything well. He had fed the five thousand. He had walked on water. He had blessed people. He had healed their sick. He had done all of that. And then he got to the point of the cross. Ah, why is my guy betraying me? Ah, why are my guys running away? Ah, why are things going? And then he was even agonizing and he was praying and his sweat was like blood and and all of that was going on and it was pain and it was intense and he's like, hey, my guys, come and pray with me. And they are sleeping and he just even gets angry that what gone? This cop. I'm not even asking. Let the cop should pass and he says he's not doing i'm not doing what i'm not doing and he lives on he doesn't die at 33 he lives on he lives till he's 77 and you know he's just this elderly man that is so wise he's a great philosopher all the children love him and he serves as an usher in the synagogue you know he pays his tithe regularly you know his carpentry business does well He's just that very regular guy and then he dies and even many children are aspiring to be like him and all of that and just this great philosopher that Jesus was and all of that but what we see in the story of Jesus is that when it comes to the will and the purpose of God it is not first a question of convenience it's a question of obedience it's not about convenience that in Jesus he was 
pursuing doing what is right, not pursuing convenience. See, convenience will make you back out. If you idolize convenience, you would sell out on a God story. If all you are after is, is it convenient, you would sell out on a God story. Listen, people, mature people don't do things that are convenient. They do things that are right. Mature people don't do things that are right because they are working. They do things that are right because it is right. Eventually, what is right will work. But in that moment, you do what is right. When you are even crying and saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But it was right for it was called to die that substitutionary death and stay upon the cross. And so in choosing obedience, in choosing obedience, then the purpose of God begins to prosper. And I just want to say to us today that it's not about us choosing a convenience pathway. It's about us choosing to be people that say, I'll do what is right. Half, half, half will can give you a convenient life, but it's dead on the inside. Half, half can make you run away and have all your philosophies about God, but it's dead. Half can make you have all these questions that you idolize and you are so philosophical but it's it's dead and i'm saying today this morning that half is not the plan of god for your life half that half life that 50 percent of yourself that just kind of comes around the things in your life the relationships the conversation the good opportunities you are i know you're in a life group but you're just kind of half there i know you're around here you're just kind of half there you are just this half person around everything half is not the plan god wants you to live your life to the full god wants you to be poured out god wants you to be overflowing with a sense of life totally given poured out fully obedient sold out in all his plans for your life that is how the plan of god thrives when we back out we lose it when we back out we lose the preciousness of god's working god calls us to be people that are fully in he says that he will put his hand to the plow and looks back he's not fit for the kingdom of god there's something about putting our hands in a god direction and being sold out to that and being given to that that is how the purpose of god thrives for our lives but i've got one more to share with you this morning before i stop because maybe you're hearing everything I'm saying today and you're saying, oh, shh. You see, there's a problem. The problem is I didn't hear this five years ago. I didn't hear this like five years ago. I, if I knew this, uh, but I've already made poor choices. I've already backed out. I've already lost it. I've already sold out. I've already given in where I should not give in. I've already made mistakes. So I've got one more. One more to share with you as I walk through the story of the scripture. Half. Half. Accepting half is Jonah in the belly of the fish saying, ah, it's over. It's over. It's over. I was supposed to go to Nineveh. I didn't go. I disobeyed. And then I put myself in this. I went on the ship going to Tarshish. And then I was thrown overboard because, you know, it, it got bumpy. And then they threw me into the river. And it's just over. I was just on a free fall. And this fish just came and swallowed me. And here I am in the belly of the fish. And it's over. But you know what I'll say to Jonah as I read through the scripture? I'll say, Jonah, that is half. That is half. Half is thinking that the story has to stop because of your failures. Half is thinking that the story has to end because of your mistakes. Listen, because of Jesus, there is redemption. I know five years ago, I could have had a better relationship with my children. Oh, when I was on campus, I could have really served God. Oh, before I lost my innocence to that guy, before I got addicted, before I got on the bad gangs, before, 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 I could have, I would have, I should have. But listen, stopping the story because of your failures is accepting half. Because of Jesus, there is redemption. Jonah disobeyed. But Jonah will tell you, don't underestimate God's ability to restore you from your mess to his beautiful purpose. Don't underestimate God's ability to restore you from your own mess. Like this is, this is you. You messed up. You made poor choices. But don't underestimate God's ability to restore you from the mess that you chose to his beautiful purpose. Because right there in the belly of the fish, when Jonah cried out, when Jonah cried out in repentance and he said, God, I've messed up, but, but if you are the God of redemption, and it's the same cry of a Peter who was walking on water, but now was beginning to sink when he was looking at the winds and waves. Peter, this is your mistake. And I know you're beginning to drown, but the story doesn't end, end as you're drowning. Because right there, when Peter was on the free fall, he cried out. It's that same cry. And the Bible says Jesus stretched out his hands and he caught him and they walked back into the boat. Please don't miss the story of the Bible. As I walk around and I show you about half guys and Abraham's obedience and Moses, please 
Don't miss the story of the Bible. The story of the Bible is not a story of perfect people. It is the story of a perfect Savior and the privilege of ordinary people giving themselves to a perfect Savior and fulfilling the plan of a good God because of the work of a perfect Savior. The story of the Bible is not about you being perfect in yourself. And I know you might be here today and you're saying there are mistakes and I've lost half points. I've thrown away. I've messed up and all of that. But I'm saying that can be the first half of the story. But maybe you're like, I've lost all the opportunities you don't understand i've gone too far i'll tell you one more half is the thief on the cross beside jesus saying in this dying moment it's over no it's not over because of jesus there is still a story of hope because of jesus in his last moments there is still a story of hope today i just want to say maybe you're in a bad place team please come maybe you're in a bad place maybe You've messed up and you know it because of jesus there is redemption the devil loves the sound of half the devil loves the sound of half the devil loves when you start to beat yourself up and say man i'm a failure i'm a mess up i messed up i've lost it i can't and all of that the devil loves that sound but because of jesus there is redemption that there can be more to this story i know you've made your mistakes but there can be more we can see this story through we can tell the devil we are not going home with half amen i can tell the devil i'm not going home with half because there's a sound of my king over this child and he's offering me the life he's offering me a living child he's offering me the whole i'm not taking half in this story and even though i had my slips and my mistakes because of jesus there is a sound of redemption and today i just want to encourage you as i close i want to encourage you because maybe you are here this morning and as I'm saying, man, don't back out in the halfway points. Don't back out in halfway of obedience. Please see it through. Maybe you're hearing all of that and you're saying to me, you don't understand. It's tiring. I feel overwhelmed. I feel like I'm holding out. I'm in these contentions of the lie and the truth. And the lie is so loud. You don't understand what's going on with me. Like the lie is so loud. The lie is so loud. And it's just, it's just making a mess of everything. The lie is so loud. The lie is hitting me in all the wrong ways. And it is so loud all over me. And you're saying you don't understand. I just feel tired and weak and weary. Here's what I want to say to you today. Hebrews chapter 12. I want to encourage you from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12. If it can be on the screen do you see what this means all these pioneers who blazed the way all these veterans cheering us on it means that we had better get on with it strip down start running and please never quit please don't quit please don't quit i know sometimes you're in the middle of questions and seasons you don't understand but please don't quit i know there's nagging of falsehood man we live in that kind of generation like the lie is so audacious in our generation it's all over you go to work you feel like there's just that pressure of falsehood and you're, sometimes you're asking yourself is mouth too much like should i just lower should i compromise please don't quit please don't compromise please there's still what it means to be a christian to hold values to hold god's standards god's righteous foundation it still stands in this generation in this day and in this age please Please don't quit. Please don't quit in your journey of obedience. Please don't quit in your journey of putting God first, of honoring God. Please don't quit. Please don't quit. No extra spiritual fat. No parasitic sins. Verse 2. I'll tell you how you won't quit. It says, keep your eyes on Jesus. I'm so glad, you know, the hero here is the one who didn't quit in his own journey, right? oh i can point the failures in everybody else but jesus didn't quit so that he's not just an example that i aspire towards but he's an empowerment that lives in me and so as i keep my eyes on jesus who both began and finished he didn't stop halfway he didn't back out amen anybody in the weight of all that he came to him he didn't back out and so he says you know what keep your eyes on jesus maybe you're looking too much to the questions you have maybe you're looking too much to the uncertainties maybe you're looking too much to what people are saying maybe you're looking too much to to your needs too much to what's not going the way you wanted it to go but can i invite you today friends can we keep our eyes on jesus maybe we're looking too much to what the lie is saying and we're over idolizing the lie we're pumping too much pressure on the lie but can we put our eyes back on the one who is himself the truth the way and the life keep your eyes on jesus who both began 
and finish this race that we're in now study how he did it because he never lost sight of where he was headed that exhilarating finish in and with God he could put up with anything along the way cross shame whatever and now he is there in the full place of his obedience and the fulfillment God has given him a name that is above every other name God has highly exalted him in the full weight of his obedience now he's there in the place of honor right alongside we got now verse 3 let me bring it to you we just stand to your feet this morning when you find yourselves flagging in your faith let me look at somebody this morning say do you ever get tired do you ever get tired do you ever get weary do you ever feel overwhelmed by the falsehood do you ever feel like the lie of the devil is choking you do you ever believe that voice that is telling you you're a failure you can't make it do you ever hear that lie so loud in your mind it says when you find yourselves flagging in your faith it's not an argument with the lie it says go over the story of truth again item by item that long litany of hostility that Jesus plowed through see it is never the strength of the light coming against us it is the weakness of our focus on the truth it is never the strength of the life arguments it is our weakness on the focus of the truth maybe you're here today and you're weary you're tired it is not how bold the lie is it is how weak you have become about the truth says look to him go over that story love this that will shoot adrenaline into your souls i don't know if anybody came to church today in the middle of a process in the middle of a journey in the middle of obedience in the middle of following jesus in the middle of doing your business in the middle of raising your family that can do with some adrenaline in your soul that can do with a god fire that will do with a god push that says god i need you to push me like only you can i need you to propel me i don't want to quit halfway half is a dead half if i ever accept that lie of the devil that says you've come this far you know just half of the dream half of the passion half of following jesus uh, compromise on this but you know just sell out on this just give it it's just one part it's it, just that just that just that just just not that much half is a dead half and today in the name of jesus we silence the lie and in the name of jesus we give ourselves to the power of god's truth and we say god have your way in us god propel us god let us see the full weight of your plan and your purpose for our lives in the name of jesus the lie will not have the better of us there might be a contention there might be an argument but i'm so glad that my king is still on the throne amen i'm so glad that i'm not just left to myself in a battle with the lie my king is on the throne and my king is silencing that lie forever we will see the full way i will not live a half life i will not live with half of god's calling i will not give half of my passion half 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 I would see the full weight of what only God can do. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray today. I pray for people who are right in the middle who feel overwhelmed. I pray for people this morning that just need to see you move in their life in a new way. I pray for people, Lord, like Moses, that are telling half of the story of what you're doing. I pray for people like Abraham that are telling half of a story of obedience. I pray for people like Joseph that are telling a story of what others are doing. I pray for people like Jonah that are in the middle of what their mistakes have cost them. But Lord, that need to see the full weight of your story. Today I pray, God, we will not buy the lie of half of the devil, but we will see the full weight of what only you can do in our lives. God, today we give ourselves to you and you. We give ourselves to look to Jesus. And I pray, God, as we look to you, that you light up our lives by the power of the Holy Spirit. We receive it today in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. Come on, let's sing it out this I morning. I still believe you're moving. I still believe you're speaking. God, I believe you're working. All things for good. I fix my eyes on heaven. God, I receive your vision. God, I believe you're working. All things for good. Sing it again. I still believe. I still believe you're working. Can somebody press I on me? Move it, God. You are working, God. It's not 
everybody lift your voice who's got faith come on all things for good I fix my eyes yeah I still believe singing let me hear the church come on it's not over the devil is a liar the devil is a liar I fix my eyes I give everybody a moment to pray this morning I don't know how you came to church I don't I don't know what this word is to you but I really sense in my spirit I'm speaking to somebody today who is in the middle who is in the middle and there's the lie of the devil telling you hey come on you can just back out there you can stop there you can sell out there something in you today needs to hear a voice of faith and speak it and say in the name of Jesus half is not the story of my life half is not the story of my life half is not the story of my life I would see it through my obedience will be complete my following will be complete the story will become I'm not backing out I'm not I'm not quitting I'm not I'm not stopping short in what God is doing in my life in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus if my Savior didn't back out I keep my eyes on him I'm pressing on I will see the victory of God in that situation I will see the sound of God over my home I will see the sound come on have you still got faith this morning somebody pray somebody pray have you got faith this morning for God to do what only he can do for God to fulfill his processes in your life somebody needs to repent this morning of where of where you've just maybe you're like Jonah this morning sitting in the belly of the fish and you need to say God I repent I call out to you I repent and God I just pray that from my mess you will work a story of your plan and of your purpose right from the place of my mess God work a story of your plan of the beauty of your purpose Hey, God is able to work what the enemy meant for evil for your good. God is still able to do that. Hey, come on. Is somebody praying this morning? Somebody needs to pray. Somebody needs to pray. Say in the name of Jesus, I will not live half. I will not. I will not. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. God, I believe you are moving, moving in hearts this morning, moving in situations, moving in dry places, moving in discouragement, moving over families, over the work of people's hands, from the front to the back, God, from the left to the right, I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you're just moving, 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 as we set our eyes on you, God. That you are working what the devil meant for evil you're working it for our good god thank you you are moving god i just pray we give you liberty this morning we give you liberty god to move to do what only you can do in the name of jesus to strengthen the weary to encourage the discouraged to lift up the downcast to say run on run on run on you are not quitting you are not backing down there you are not selling out there you will hold your integrity you will keep the value your faith will see you through your faith will not fail we pray for you today Jesus prayed for Peter he said Satan has desired to sift you like we but I pray for you your faith will not fail I pray your faith will not fail your faith will not fail not fail thank you God thank you God Thank you, God. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. I do not live a half-life. Say in the name of Jesus. I am fully given. Totally surrendered. Say in the name of Jesus. I will complete my processes. I will not back out. I will not tire away. Say in the name of Jesus, I fix my eyes on Jesus. My strength is renewed. My staying power is refreshed. 
Say I will make it through. I will see it through. Say I will fulfill the purpose of God in my life. I will not back away. I will not back down. God's purpose will prosper in me. Say in the name of Jesus, I refuse the half story. I refuse the half life. I refuse half joy. I refuse half peace. I refuse half passion. Say I want the fool that Jesus died for. I receive the fool. I claim the fool in Jesus name. Come on clap your hands and give him praise. While we stay standing this morning, I want to make an invitation for somebody to say yes to Jesus. Maybe you come around church, maybe you're new, really doesn't matter. But you just can't boldly say, can everybody stay standing? You can't boldly say that you are in the right place with God. You know why we're standing? We're standing because we want to stand with you. We want to honor your decision. Um, you have a right to choose today. You have a right to be set right with God because of what Jesus did. You don't have to go back just kind of around but not really in it you can have a real experience of the love of a savior today maybe you see like man you don't know how messed up i am like i've made mistakes i'm far away from god it really doesn't matter how far away you are you see jesus came all the way so that people far away from god can be brought near because of his sacrifice jesus paid the price that you were supposed to pay so that you can have a life that you never deserve to have and how does that happen all you need to do is to say yes to say i believe so you put your trust in what jesus did as your root to god and this morning can be that miracle in your life this morning can be you saying my sins are forgiven <sighs> wow every single bit of it it's forgiven god is not holding that against me but his arms are wide open and he's receiving me home because I put my faith in what Jesus has done for me. I'd love to lead you in that miracle this morning. We're standing to honor your decision. If you say you're not right with God, I'm not in the right place with God, whether you're in this building or you're online anyway, I'm not in the right place with God. I want to be made right. I need forgiveness today. Maybe at some point you had made this decision, but as we speak, you know you've walked away, you're far away. You need to be made right. You need forgiveness. You need to come back home today or you need that new beginning that only Jesus can give. I'm going to count to three and right where you are, I want you to put your hand on your chest. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Let this be somebody's moment moment today let's believe god for a miracle today are you ready one two three put your hand on your chest where you are say you're speaking to me i need i need a new life i need jesus i need forgiveness god bless you thank you thank you all the way to the back thank you for your sincerity this morning that's a miracle happening in your life i'm so proud of you everybody we say yes to jesus today anybody else want to join in god bless you that's a miracle god bless you thank you if you're online, God sees you right where you are. Just put your hand on your chest. It's a miracle happening in your life this morning. I'm going to have all of us say a prayer together. If your hand is on your chest, you know what? This is a family or a crowd. We want to stand with you and speak these words with you. But with your hand on your chest, say these words boldly, knowing the Bible says we believe with our hearts and we confess with our mouths unto salvation. So can we all say together this morning, Heavenly Father, I come to you today because you've made a way for me to come through the death the burial and the resurrection of your son Jesus so I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is the son of God and he's the savior of the world so I believe he died in my place so that I can come alive say today I confess Jesus as my savior and my Lord say please forgive me of the past please forgive me of all my failure and give me a whole new start say i boldly declare that because of jesus i'm a child of god i'm fully forgiven and i'm in the right place with god say one day i'll be with him in heaven in jesus name amen and amen and amen and congratulations and praise the lord everybody who prayed that prayer this morning congratulations praise god a miracle just happened in your life. We're so excited about it. We're so proud of your choice this morning.